No one should have to live in fear of gang violence. The government of Canada is committed to reducing gun crime and criminal gang activity that threatens the safety of Canadians. The government will spend $327 million over the next five years on anti-gang initiatives. And what does that mean? Well, Ralph Goodale wouldn't give specifics on where the money will go, but he said stopping the flow of illegal weapons is the top priority. So let me try to give you a sense of the problem. In 2015, more than 25,000 guns were seized in Canada. And over the last decade, the number of gun crimes has actually gone down. But if you look at guns and gangs, about three quarters of gang-related homicides in this country involved a gun. It is the deadly weapon of choice, it would seem. Whereas in homicides that weren't gang-related, a gun was involved just 20% of the time. So no surprise that Goodale made his announcement in a city that has been scarred by gang violence. Surrey, British Columbia. Our Greg Rasmussen spoke to some people who know the problem there firsthand, and he asked them what is most urgently needed. And did you ever pack a gun? In my own involvement, yeah, absolutely. I Amir Javid says money, power, and drugs all add up to a world where rival street gangs feel guns are a must. If you're in a gang, you have a gun. It, they, they both go hand in hand. In fact, I don't know anyone who's involved in gangs that does not possess or have access to uh, um, a huge arsenal of weapons. He says it's easy to get caught up in gang life, but says there's little help for those looking to get out. Right now, though, the biggest problem we have is we have actually no exit strategies. Um, how do we get the guys that are on the street out now? Because that's going to really help us in combating the violence that we see on the streets today. As someone now working to help people get out of gangs, Javid hopes today's promises translate into support on the ground. Type of violence which... Officials say some of the money will go to arresting criminals and intercepting weapons, but police acknowledge that's not the entire solution. It's a combination of a number of things, and, you know, we know that we're not going to arrest our way out of this. I'm a former full-patch member of the Hells Angels. Joe Calandino is one of the few who is able to walk away from the notorious gang. He says the mix of outreach and policing announced today is key to reducing gang violence. Absolutely. I believe this is a step in the right direction. As Calandino now heads a charity that tries to intercept young people as early as grade six, who appear headed for a life in gangs. In addition to money and power, he says people often join in search of emotional support. It's the status, it's the sense of belonging, it's that um, having your people that watch your back, it's all those things. So how is it we make our youth understand that you can get that on a different side. Uh, there's a culture here that is really uh, reinforcing this belief that gangs are still uh, a viable option for youth. We have to dispel that. A shared goal, but getting there won't be easy. Greg Rasmussen, CBC News, Vancouver. And Ian, speaking of not easy, I mean, you and I both know from our time in BC that earning a community's trust is something that has been a difficult point for police. I mean, even getting victims of crime to talk to them and give them information, and that's something money can't necessarily buy. And as you pointed out as well, announcement of big money, but uh, very few details, so we'll wait for those.